Once again, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, 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 beloveds. Welcome you all here at Faith Christian in the heart of Bedford, Texas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. I'm Pastor K. Welcome to our very, very special Sunday morning sermon. We thank all of you being here on this morning. This is our Christmas sermon. And again, I say welcome. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we just thank you once again to be in your presence. We thank you for who you are. We thank you as we give joy because of the season. Beloveds, we thank God for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And we ask that you, God, you use me for thee on this morning. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Search my heart and guide my thoughts. Lord, if there be any wrong way in me, lead me now in the way everlasting. We thank you for this confirmation of this word, the living word, that is within the kingdom of God. Through your vessel this morning, in Jesus' name, Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> we thank God for all of you on this Sunday morning. Luke chapter 2. We're not even going to hesitate. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, beloveds. Let's go right to it. Amen. I'm just excited about this Christmas message on this morning. God bless you all who have an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. Luke chapter 2 coming from the New Living Translation and we'll just paint the picture starting at verse number 8 where it says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Verse 11 says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Beloveds, if I could share with you a title to this text, follow the sign, follow the sign, follow the sign. Beloveds, since we have followed the sign, follow this, since we have been made right in God's eyesight because of our salvation, we have peace now. Follow the sign, beloveds. We now have faith in Jesus Christ. We now have faith 
because Christ has positioned himself in our hearts. Follow the sign, beloveds. We now have joy, peace, boldness, confidence, encouragement. Why? Because to appreciate kingdom life, living in love, follow the sign, beloveds. We now have his glory in our hearts. Knowing these things, beloveds, follow the sign. We can do all things. We can do anything. And so watch this, beloveds. We know these things now in our hearts because we now follow the sign. Beloveds, the sign that Luke shares in his gospel on this Sunday morning Christmas message is Jesus Christ, his sign of opportunity, his sign of enlightenment, his sign of encouragement. Watch this. In only 52 verses, here we are in chapter 2 of Luke's gospel. Follow the sign, beloveds. In this one chapter, the believer is able to follow the sign to our sovereign Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, beloveds, watch this. Long before Luke came, our sign of a sovereign Savior before eternity existed. Well, let me say that again, beloveds. Long before Luke's gospel came, our sign of a sovereign Savior came before eternity existed. Oh, let me go a little further. Let me paint that picture, beloveds, because an opportunity that gives one direction, an opportunity, whether it's our sovereign Savior himself or a star in the east that we come to worship, beloveds, we follow the sign and we've been made right in God's eyesight because of the sign. Oh, let me go a little further, beloveds. Follow the sign because we now have peace because we follow the sign. Oh, we follow the sign because we now have faith in our hearts because we follow the sign. We now have joy. We now have boldness, confidence, love, peace because we follow the sign, beloveds. We have kingdom living life in love because we follow the sign. Let me go a little further, beloveds, because we now have glory in Christ because knowing all these things, we can do anything. That's why we celebrate the way we celebrate. Here we are in the month of December. Beloved, the gospel of Luke gives our orders for our steps to our sovereign Savior, Jesus Christ. He leads us to his birthplace. Oh, let me go a little further, beloveds, because Luke's gospel opens doors of opportunity only through 52 verses. Oh, that's good, beloveds. We're going to paint this picture because what God is trying to say in the midst of how Luke paints the picture in the birth of the everlasting Savior, the perfect Savior, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, the light of the world. The Gospel of Luke refreshes us every single year. The Gospel of Luke encourages us, encourages the believer in their belief from verse 1 all the way to verse 52. Oh, I'm going to go a little further, beloveds, because in how we look at the perfect Savior and how we see the road map to follow the sign, our righteous road map, our righteous road map leads us to a radical Savior. Our righteous road map leads us to kingdom communion with our Creator. Oh, let me go a little further, beloveds, because in the midst of how we see this righteous roadmap to a radical Savior, we have communion with the kingdom. 
And so we understand why we celebrate and follow the sign. We understand we used to, can I preach this for a minute? We used to follow other signs in our life. We used to find and design ourselves and follow other signs and symbols. We used to follow things that wasn't perfect. Oh, let me go a little further, beloved. It's because those things that we follow, those signs and symbols distracted us. Follow the sign, beloved. Those things that we used to follow kept us from the occupation of the kingdom. And so we go a little further. We have decided to make our decisions every single day. That's why he says we pick up our cross daily and follow him. We follow the sign to our righteous roadmap. We follow the sign through the righteous roadmap to the kingdom communion that we have with our creator today, beloveds, today. And so all of a sudden, we see in the midst of the gospel of Luke, he encourages us. He gives us an opportunity in the midst of decision making, we understand the righteousness, the forgiveness, the love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, but watch this, grace and mercy. That's why we thank God every single year, 365, 24-7, it ought to be, but we thank God to celebrate the perfect sign. We thank God to celebrate and pay attention this morning to a righteous roadmap leading to a perfect Savior. And that's why verse 12 it gives us an opportunity to recognize him. Somebody needs to recognize him right now. Oh, follow the sign, beloveds. Follow what the scripture's saying. We recognize him. Even in the midst of this Christmas message, you will find a baby wrapped in some, some translations say swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Oh, beloveds, because he did not have to do it. Don't you know he didn't have to do it? Oh, watch this. Let me paint this picture. Before your love, there was everlasting life. Before your love for him, before your life with him, there was eternity. Oh, let me paint that picture, beloved. It's because the only way to follow the sign was to believe the sign. Oh, beloved. And so now we go and we celebrate in the midst of the week of how we see December 25th, we mark that on our calendars every single year. So God allows us to understand when we follow the sign, regardless of what that sign looks like, it leads us to a perfect position in our lives. It leads us to a perfect place in our hearts. And so we make room for Jesus. Uh, we make room for him and we recognize him by his sign. Follow his sign, beloveds. Follow him. And so we find in the midst of this sign, Luke lays out the perfect example of kingdom eternity wrapped up in swaddling clothes, wrapped up in a manger. Oh, let me paint this picture, beloveds, because... Luke paints the picture and leads the believer to follow the everlasting sign. Luke paints the picture because in the midst of how we see from verse 1, in the midst of Augustus, King Augustus, don't you know Augustus tried to change the course of history? Uh, he thought he was doing something, beloved. He thought he was doing something when he put the decree to give us senses. Can I go ahead and tell the story, beloveds? <clears throat> In the midst of how the story goes, Luke goes ahead and start out. In the midst of a decree, it became our direction. Oh, Augustus Caesar tried to go ahead and change the ancestral things 
of what God had already given us in the midst of prophecy. But don't you know Christ came to fulfill prophecy? Don't you know Christ provided his presence in the midst of prophecy? Don't you know Christ presented the kingdom of God to give us what prophecy had already called us? And so here it is. Watch this. Oh, the king right there in verse one, Luke was so good at this. He allows us to understand a distraction, but that leaded us in the direction of the perfect divinity of Jesus Christ. Oh, don't you know in the midst of what man tries to mess up, God will come along and make it his ministry. And so all of a sudden, beloveds, we discover in the midst of the census of registration, in the midst of Mary and Joseph being in Nazareth, and we already knew nothing good comes out of Nazareth, but don't you know God changed it around. He already fulfilled prophecy because in the midst of Nazareth, we knew Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem because that's where they were from. And so they had to be counted. And guess what? We discover in the midst of the decree, God just made it good. And he allows us to understand the signature of salvation. Isn't it a joy to know in the midst of how a signature of a sovereign savior, we see that we follow the sign. We see that the world needed a savior. So God went on. Oh, let me go ahead and paint that picture a little bit more. We see the humble shepherds directed to the nativity. We see the wise men eventually following the star. That's why I'm telling you, beloveds, we see in the testaments of our in the midst of the old and the new, we see the seas that have turned to blood. We have seen the sun stand still. We're talking about the signs of the 66 books of the Bible. Can I go a little further? We've seen the shadow of a sundial. We've seen the sundial stop in the midst of what scripture has told us. And all of a sudden, we see a babe wrapped up in swaddling clothes. Follow the sign, beloveds. We've seen many signs in the Bible, but it's a decree in the midst of what man tried to do. And God gave us a direction because of prophecy. And so not only did we see the prophecy but we also see Christ coming in the midst of how we look at this word suddenly. And so God allows us to understand Christ fulfilled prophecy when man tried to change it for himself to go ahead and kill what was already prophetic. God came along and tells us in the midst of the text, there was an angel. Oh, the angel of the Lord came along in the midst of the multitude, in the midst of how we see the heavenly host, God gives us an opportunity in the midst of Luke's gospel, in the midst of how we see what the gospel of Luke was telling us, in the midst of all the distractions starting out, Luke penned the picture. He painted the picture. He started out with the distractions, but God still gave us direction. Oh, Father, the star follow the signs, follow in the midst of a perfect savior. And all of a sudden God comes along and he tells us in the midst of how we see Romans chapter five, verses one and two, he says, since we have been made right with God, oh, we have peace because of Jesus Christ and what the Lord has done. Oh, let me go a little further, beloved, because God announced in the midst of him coming and birthing legally into the world, he gives us an opportunity for amnesty. Oh, 
Peace was lost in the world. We got to understand, beloveds, there was no peace. And so God gives us an opportunity from the beginning of time to give us peace beyond all understanding. God had to make a way out of no way. And so we discover, beloveds, we follow the sign. We follow the sign because baby Jesus in the town of Bethlehem all the way to his 12-year-old journey in Jerusalem every single year, Luke paints the picture. He tells us why we celebrate Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's why even the scriptures encourage us, even in Hebrews 3 and 15, if you're hearing the voice of God, harden not your heart. Oh, beloveds, I'm about to go ahead because when we finish that scripture, it says, as in rebellion. And so Luke paints the picture starting in the midst of a king who's there of this world, who decided to make things great and try to make rebellion. And don't you know, Luke paints that picture and he continues on and on. And he tells us in the midst of Luke chapter two, he takes the believer on a journey and writes only 52 verses to lead us and celebrate the King of Kings and celebrate the Lord of Lords. Read it for yourself. So Luke tells the story. Follow the sign, beloveds. We must be about, and this is what Jesus Christ eventually tells us when we get to verse 49 of the same chapter. But let me paint this picture because even before we get to verse 49 of Luke chapter 2, Jesus comes in to the world and he allows us to see the signature of our salvation. Oh, beloveds. Oh, let me say it like this. Let me paint the picture like Luke painted. It was Augustus who tried to rebel against the prophecy. It was Mary and Joseph who fulfilled prophecy. It was the angel of the Lord who came along with prophecy. It was the shepherds who followed prophecy. And it was Simeon. It was Anna in the midst of how we see the temple, in the midst of the baby Jesus being born in a manger. And then suddenly later, they came along. Simeon in the midst of the temple who circumcised the child Jesus. Anna who was already there in the midst of how we go through the things in our lives even on today. Oh, didn't you know? Didn't you know in the midst of how we see the direction because of what God leads us in the midst of the nativity, in the midst of the night things in life. And so God leads us in the midst of Luke, in the midst of the gospel. He tells us in the midst of a baby in a manger, Jesus comes along. He tells the story in Luke. He gives us an opportunity to understand in the midst of how we see our lives. Fast forward. God fulfills prophecy. He comes into this world. We see the decree, but it leads us to a direction, the only direction, the only way. And so even in the midst of the only way, Luke paints the picture of the shepherds, the shepherds who were nearby taking care of the sheep, whether they were temple shepherds or they were just regular shepherds. It is important to understand, beloveds. The point is there was shepherds nearby. Do you hear what I'm saying? God allows us to understand in the midst of taking care of God's people, God sent himself to take care 
of us. He sent the only begotten son to take care of us. And so he paints the picture through the gospel of Luke and he encourages us, follow the sign. If it's the star in the east, follow the sign according to how we see other gospels. If it is the earth standing still, follow the sign because God is going to make a way out of no way. If it's the sea turning to blood, follow the sign because God prophetically will come. And what God is trying to say, Luke didn't paint the picture to begin or end. He wants us to continue, continue to follow the sign in your heart. Continue to worship him. Continue to follow the sign because Christ is leading us to others. Beloveds, if you know Christ is in your heart, if you know Christ is leading you, just like he tells us in the midst of how we see what Christ has already done, isn't it a joy to understand in the midst of what the enemy tried to do? The enemy tried to put a contract because he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And God came in the midst of who he is. He co-signed himself in the midst of ripping up that contract from hell. And he tore up the things of what the enemy tried to do. And that's why Con Calvary was so important in the midst of the baby Jesus and the story of a baby coming from Bethlehem. The prophecy tells us, but Luke even goes further, beloveds. And I'm going to my seat because he paints the picture of a baby fulfilling prophecy who was born in Bethlehem. We see the nativity who was born a baby in a manger and they was given glory, glory to God in the highest, peace, goodwill toward men. In other words, God sent the shepherds. God took care of the sheep, even while the shepherds were praising the king of kings, even while we see the heavenly host and the enemy got canceled. And we got to understand, beloveds, and how we see the way the gospel of Luke tells us. And here it is, beloveds. We get to verse 49. Jesus was already born. He had already been circumcised, been through the temple. And so now at the end of Luke's gospel, we see a 12-year-old. His name is Jesus. And we see the first time in chapter 2, from a baby born in Bethlehem. Walk with me. Follow the sign. A baby born in Bethlehem, fulfilling prophecy, going through the steps, tearing up the contract of the devil. And all of a sudden, here it is, verse 49. The verse 49 of our lives, beloveds. Luke did it so well. It's such an exciting time to speak about Luke chapter 2 every single year because what he tells us, we never heard the voice of Jesus in the entire chapter until we get to verse 49. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 tells us, harden not your heart. Luke chapter 15 
chapter 3, verse 15 encourages us, beloveds, because once you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So Luke painted the picture from birth in the manifestation of Jesus Christ. He always was. He always will and always will be. He is right now in someone's heart. And so the scriptures declare in the midst of how we see the kings of this world try to be greater than a king of kings in how we see nighttime turning and leading us to the nativity and how we see the manger is now the message. Oh, beloveds, Christ fulfilled prophecy. He's fulfilling somebody's heart right now because his voice, once you hear his voice, follow the sign. Once you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Beloved, somebody is listening right now. You've been waiting 364 days, 24-7, and here it is. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And God encourages you in the midst of only 52 verses of chapter 2 of Luke's gospel. He has led you. Follow the sign. He's led you from an incarnation, from a baby in a manger that came down from heaven. But he comes and he opens the windows. He opens the doors. He opens the doors, Revelation chapter 3, that no man can shut. Beloveds, this is your opportunity to accept Jesus Christ for who he is, your Lord and Savior and Redeemer. All you have to do is believe who he is. He was born in a manger. But all of a sudden, as you continue to read the chapter of your life, woo, something happens suddenly. Something happened in your life. Maybe you woke up this morning. Maybe you went to sleep last night and suddenly Hebrews 3 and 15 came into your spirit. If you hear his voice right now, harden not your heart. Oh, they tried to be rebellious. That's why Luke started out in the midst of a rebellious king trying to be great. In the midst of how we see the world. Oh, beloved, God wants you to understand. Luke chapter 2 leads you, follow the perfect sign. Jesus Christ signed his name in our hearts. Beloved, that's all you want to do is let him be the signature because of your salvation. Won't you accept him today? Won't you let him be that signature in your life? Because he's the sovereign savior. He's who he says he is. If there's ever a time in life in this year, especially this season, give your life to Christ. Won't you repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is dying and God has raised him from the dead. So I'm saved. Jesus came and demonstrated his love for us. Yet while we were still sinners, he gave his life for us. He didn't come to condemn us, beloveds. He came to give us everlasting life. Follow the sign. Beloveds, you'll know when you accept him for who he is. He's an everlasting savior. This is the season because Jesus is the reason for you as he came and he's here right now. Well, that's all I have for you, beloveds. We thank God for everyone continuing 
to understand it's because we love him, he loves us. And he came to give us life, kingdom life, everlasting life. So understand the signature of our salvation is Jesus Christ. The signature is our sovereign savior. He signed himself right there on your heart. Why don't you share this message this week? Share the message. Follow the sign. He's letting you be the witness in your worship. He's allowing you to understand, had it not been for the Lord on my side. Somebody's hearing his voice this week, today. The message is clear. Follow the sign. Well, here's your benediction. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our true Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And all the saints and believers said together, amen. Go in peace, beloveds. Enjoy and know that he signed his name in your life, on your heart. He loves you, beloveds. Share his message today. Won't you do it for him? I'm Pastor K. God bless you until we talk and pray again about the love of Jesus. Bye-bye.